Hello and welcome to this webinar, which is part of the complementary webinars aimed at discovering the analytical powers of the geometric suite of data analytics solutions. This webinar is the third in a series of 11 webinars, and it has the title Making Everyday Data-Driven Decisions Efficient. And today we are going to zoom in on a relatively new product that is part of the geometric suite, and that is the Easy Analytics software. But first, a few words about who we are. Geometrics is now part of Sartorius Stadium Biotech. The roots of Sartorius Stadium uh, data analytics go back all the way to 1987 when Professor Svante Wold and Professor Rolf Karlsson formed a company in northern Sweden called Umetri, which later became Geometrics and these days Sartorius Stadium Data Analytics. Uh, our mission is driving growth by enabling our customers to see what others don't. Our vision is to be recognized as the leading data analytics solution provider. So since we are a business solution provider in the fields of advanced data analytics, we are realizing this through the geometric suite of data analytics solutions, which has the softwares Modde, Easy Analytics, Simca, Simca Online, Control Advisor and Active Dashboard. In the first two parts of this uh, series of 11 webinars, we familiarized ourselves with MODE for design of experiments and quality by design. And today we're going to zoom in on Easy Analytics and understand how uh, it can uh, facilitate everyday data-driven decisions in an efficient way. So here we have an outline of today's presentation. First, we're going to look into why we have developed Easy Analytics. We're going to familiarize ourselves with the graphical user interface, the backbone of Easy Analytics. Uh, we will discuss uh, some of the use cases that are underpinning the, release, the current release, and also there will be a demonstration of the use cases. And towards the end, there will be a summary and conclusion sections. But first, I'll share the story behind Easy Analytics, and we will go through what it is today and also look forward on where we are heading. So why have we developed this new product? Uh, well, <clears throat> we want to make sure we stay ahead of the game to meet future market needs and expectations. How we work with computers and softwares is changing. And rather than talking about software, we discuss solutions and applications. That's what we all are looking for. Solutions that will help us understand our data and the information it can give. These solutions should be available and easy to use for anyone, not just data scientists or data analytical experts. That's what consumerization of data is all about, making the information available, available to anyone in an easy, accessible format. I'm sure most of you have attended the Geometrics Academy training or perhaps one of our complimentary webinars to learn how our technologies and tools work. On the other hand, I'd say that not a single person has taken a course on how to use the Facebook app, the LinkedIn app, or the Netflix app. You may think that those apps have nothing to do with data analysis, but they do. They give recommendations on what you may want to do, what you may be interested in, and what you perhaps might be interested in the future, based on the information you directly or indirectly have provided to the app. On the other hand, you will be annoyed if you get the wrong recommendations and perhaps stop to use the service. Tools that don't require mathematical or statistical training has to be reliable and always give a reliable answer. We also need to adapt to increasing data amounts and look into alternative algorithms or adaptations of our current ones. So this is a bit about what the market seems to expect at the moment. And at the same time, we are also facing other changes and, and challenges. One of the challenges relate to technology changes. Our working environment and equipment change. Point and click with a mouse is replaced by simply point, as laptops with touch screens replace the desktop computers. Tablets also enter into our workplaces to further increase flexibility and mobility. This new environment also puts completely new demands, both on software engineering and graphical user interface design. 
From the Umetrics business, of course, we intend to follow along with this development to ensure that you not only can continue to benefit from our technologies in the future, but also increase the values you gain. Easy Analytics is the first step on this journey. It is still a Windows-based local installation, so we are not on tablets and cloud just yet. During the development uh, of Easy Analytics, we have kept a few things in mind, and you can say these things are also the hallmarks uh, of Easy Analytics. And here I'm thinking about focus, simplicity, and reliability. Focus in the sense on focus on solving a specific task. Features and technologies are only implemented if they support the use case we are currently working on. And I will demonstrate the targeted use cases shortly in the software demonstration. And of course, we are also very interested in getting input from you, the watchers and users for our future development. The second thing we have focused on is simplicity. To keep it simple, minimize options, alternative settings, and things that may cause confusion. And naturally, of course, reliability. That's in the core of Sartorius Stedem Data Analytics Solutions. <clears throat> With the Umetric suite of data analytic solutions, you get things right the first time. This is something what that's something we are known for for delivering reliable results and solutions that work. And of course, we intend to keep doing that also in the future. So what then is Easy Analytics today? Well, <clears throat> the simplest way to describe Easy Analytics is to say that it is built as a guided workflow from data management to data analysis and data insight where we are going to make the final reports and communicate our results. At the data management stage, you are going to import data from several sources. You can also merge data sources on ID or time, and you can also apply filters. And the objective of the data management state, state or stage is mainly to prepare your data set for a smooth and suing data analysis. At the data analysis stage, well, here we currently focus on visualization of data. And this is where we, in the future, will build up a data analysis toolbox that makes sense to the user, complementing the advanced analysis possibilities already available inside the Umetrix suite, notably inside the Simca software, the flagship of the suite. Data insight means that here we are going to finalize the analysis, create a report and communicate and share it uh, among the colleagues or in the organization and distribution should be easy. And above all, it has been very important for us that you can automate this. And that's also something that has been very strongly requested from our clients. That's why we support scripting using Python, just as we do in the Simca software. And this also lays the ground for these two softwares being able to communicate with each other. So uh, now we're going to look into the different use cases that have been in focus when developing the current version of EC Analytics. And we're going to go through three use cases. And the first one is one of data management. Data management is a well-known issue for most people working with data analysis. Getting the data in order usually takes a lot longer than the actual analysis. It, it also requires a lot of knowledge of, for instance, Excel or MATLAB and perhaps also scripting. In the end, this may hinder organizations to find the growth potential that they really have in their data. You simply never get to the data analysis part because of all the obstacles on the way. The import engine that we have for Simca has been very much appreciated for its flexibility and capabilities, but many functions are not known because they are not found or seen. In Easy Analytics, we have focused on a different kind of user interface, and the user interface is more interactive, guiding, and intuitive. We've also added some additional functionalities regarding possibility to align data on time and values and so on that we don't have available today in the Simca software. And that is one of the things that will be demonstrated later on. The second use case I will demonstrate for you has to do with process deviation analysis. 
And here the background scenario is that we have a person or a team that would like to perform a daily review of some important process signals. Every morning when they come into the office, they would like to have a rundown on the last 24 hours of process performance, compare this information to the critical process limits for these signals. Not the standard deviations, just the critical process limits that are set for the process in question. And the, the, they want to have an instant overview, which is the key word here. Are there any deviators? Which one? Can they be interpreted and understood? And in the end, they want to deliver this overview and rundown in a comprehensive report to their manager. And this should also be possible to accomplish in a one-click solution from data import to data report. And this is also going to be demonstrated. The third use case that I will discuss relates to process qualification and capability analysis. And here we have two new tools, the Western Electric Rule System and various process capability indices. In Statistical Process Control SPC, the Western Electric Rules are decision rules for detecting out of control or non-random conditions on control charts. The Western Electric Rules dates back to the mid-50s and appear in the first edition of the Statistical Quality Control Handbook. We have implemented four rules that are called Rule 1 to Rule 4. In addition to the Western Electric Rules, uh, we have also implemented some other indices, the CP and CPK and PP and PPK indices, which relate to process capability and process performance. And, and briefly, you can say that CPK, the, the process capability index, is a number which measures how close a process is running to its specification limits relative to the natural variability of the process. And the larger the index, the more capable the process. Uh, and uh, simply speaking, you can say that CPK tells you what the process is capable of doing in the future, in, uh, assuming it remains in a state of statistical control, whereas PPK tells you how the process has performed in the past. And uh, these three use cases will, I, and I will now demonstrate these three use cases in, in, in a demonstration of, of easy analytics. Here we see uh, the graphical user interface of EC Analytics. It has a normal backstage where you have the common commands of new and open and save and so on. Uh, in the left hand part where I'm pointing right now we have what we call a data items pane and here we will see all the data sets that have been imported. In the middle section we have a drop surface where we can drop different parts or all data sets that have been imported and here we can also do some merging and alignment. And in the lower middle section you can say the data that we are um, dropping at the drop surface will be visualized in terms of an Excel-like uh, spreadsheet. In the right hand part we have what we call the data properties pane and here you will see for those of you that are uh, familiar with the Simca software you will see something that very much resembles what we call the quick info functionality in the Simca software. In the top part we have a progress bar that represents this guided workflow. It starts with data management, the second stage is data analysis and the last stage is data insight. <clears throat> and I will now start to illustrate this guided workflow from left to right along the progress bar using a, a data set that is taken out of MKS Data Analytics Solutions uh, uh, training material. It is called the Sovereign data set. So we're going to add a data set from file. This is called the Sovereign uh, data set. I can either mark it and say open, but I can also I can also add it like this by dropping it like, like that. Now, if I would like to visualize the data, I, I click and drag and release it in the drop surface. And then in the middle section, we see a worksheet, similar thing, where we have all the time points <coughs> and all the process parameters that are measured. And we can click on any column we like. And then in the data property pane, we see some common plots like histogram plots, trend charts, run charts with time and also a column plot. And this one 
very quickly updates by clicking the different columns. In the lower part of the data properties pane, we also have a univariate statistic uh, section where we can decide which univariate parameters we would like to see. I will just give a very, very brief explanation to this data set. It relates to a mineral sorting plant and there are 12 process inputs that reflect how the mineral sorting plant is being operated. And then there are six so-called process outputs. Three of them represent throughput. Uh, there are two product streams. One is called PAR. The second one is called FAR. And then we have a relative amount of one of those relative to the other. And then the last three product uh, process outputs do not relate to throughput but to qualities and they are measured at discrete time points of this process. And for instance, one of the most critical uh, process qualities is the amount of iron in the product stream called FAR. <clears throat> so now we, we will be using this soaring data set to illustrate the guided workflow of data management data analysis and, and data insight. And one of the things that we can do in the data analysis part is to start to plot how some of the critical process parameters are changing with time. We may, for instance, want to make a, a run chart of the tonnage in into the process or the, or the load. Another parameter that is known to have a huge influence on the behavior of the process is, is the speed of the first so-called magnetic separator. And now we have different options. We may choose to add this um, variable to have a, a unique or individual y-axis or perhaps add it with a separate y-axis so we can co-chart these together. Another parameter that has a strong influence on the behavior of this mineral sorting process is the speed of the second magnetic separator that we will also add using a, an individual uh, y-axis. Finally we, we may want to chart also how this very important product quality. The percentage of iron in the far is changing with time, so we are also adding that one to this um, run chart. Perhaps we should also uh, make this uh, line a little thicker. We can change the um, color and we can also increase the line thickness a bit, uh, perhaps like this. And then we can use the same sort of hoovering phenomenon as or technology as we have in the Simca. We can selectively hoover on the different labels to see how the different uh, pr pr critical process parameters and the this important quality is changing with time by looking at them one and one. And after a while you will start to see that in many cases where you have a very high iron in the far, which is towards the end of the sampling campaign, you also are running the second magnetic separator on a very high speed. We can for also do other types of plots. For instance, we can compare how uh, different uh, the different speeds of the magnetic separator are changing using or how they are correlated using a scatter plot. We may want to do, uh, for instance, uh, arbitrarily a histogram plot of some important variable. And after a while, when we have analyzed the data, we move over to the last stage, which is the data insight stage. And here we have a possibility to um, give a little title perhaps. We can then start to drag in uh, here, place run chart. And we can then include this plot. We can then move over and look at histogram, for instance. Put that one down here. Like that. 
and we can do a lot of different things. And then we have different ways of uh, communicating the, the report that we are f uh, have under construction right now. We can share it as a PDF and then open up an email program and append the PDF automatically in a pre-configured email. Or we can open it in different platforms such as in Word and visualize what we have done so far and continue the reporting, uh, for instance, in the Word uh, or Excel or some other uh, software. So this is, the, this is how easy it is to make a data analysis using this guided workflow. We will now close this one and move over to the three use cases. The first use case that we are going to exemplify is this uh, called data management. And we will then add the data for this. And it is something that we call the example file. This data set comes from a, ferment, uh, from, a, from a batch process. It has two data sets. It has a process data set where we see that we have uh, classical process parameters being measured over time. Every row is uh, um, separated by around two minutes. So we have um, for every second minute in this biofermentation process, measured classical parameters such as air, carbon dioxide, various gas flows, pH, and so on and so forth. At the same time, we also have the in-process control or IPC data. And here we see that we have much fewer measurements for each batch, and there are several hours between these measurements. And what we would now like to accomplish is to use... Um, we want to align these data. We want to use the process data as a reference or a guideline to align the uh, IPC data. And we will, we will uh, now do like that. The problem is that if we are doing a, a full merge like this, um, we are not getting exactly the results that we are were hoping for because we will have we will have the IPC data at the end of the process data set that this is clearly not what we want what we want to accomplish is is a way to separate out the individual uh, measurements in the ipc data and align them with the closest um, time point of the process data set so we're going to change from a full merge to a left merge and what we will do is that we will merge on the batch id we select batch ID for the process data set, and we select batch ID also for the IPC data set. Secondly, we are going to match on time for both of these, and we are going to match to the nearest. And then we see here in the overview pane through the different colors, the light blue color represents the process data set, and the yellowish row uh, or more rows down, down the way represent where the different time points of the IPC data are, are uh, ending up. And we can see here that we have then the IPC data coming at discrete time points. So this is one thing that we can do. We can, we can merge data and align on time or other uh, ID for instance. Um, we can then, of course, also move on and, and plot the data here. We can do line charts and, and other things. And that we have done already, but I will still do a little line plot for this data set because there is one small element that I would like to uh, describe to you how you can filter data. And that is when you have categories, for instance, like a batch ID, you can either select uh, to plot all the, or you can choose to plot selected uh, uh, process variables for all batches, but you can also filter and filter out and selectively plot the data for just one for one batch at a time, if that is something you prefer. So now we're looking at the selected process signals for the first batch, but we can also do it for the for the second batch or any other selected uh, category can be used uh, for this kind of plotting purposes. Uh, now, one thing that we can also do is to use scripting to get uh, a full-blown um, batch data set and go directly from Easy Analytics into Simca. So we will close this and then exemplify how you can use uh, Python scripting to um, accomplish this. So we are 
running this little script that will first of all recreate what I just did and then it will also as you will see in a moment open up the Simca software and inside the Simca software we then have a fully blown fully configured correctly um, formatted uh, batch process uh, USP file so this is one way you can say you can through scripting get easy analytics functionalities over or communicate with the capabilities of the Simca software. The next use case that I will uh, be illustrating relates to the deviation analysis. And now we're going to use, we're going to load a data set that relates to a copper electrolysis process. It is actually two XLS files that I'm going to lo load. And now we will exemplify how you can merge data instead of merging um, side by side, you can say we're dropping now to add rows and we're going to use a full merge. So you can see how the different colors indicates the different segments. <clears throat> uh, briefly, this is, a, as I said, data coming out of a copper electrolysis process. It is an extremely pure copper and the variables represent different impurities of eight uh, elements, you can say. And these are measured on the PPM scale. So these are very, very pure uh, copper samples. The overall quality is indicated by something called the total analysis index. And within this industry, uh, a high value of eight is used as a <clears throat> quality limit or specification. And any copper sample or copper batch that has a high value exceeding eight is will usually be discarded. But before we exemplify the devi process deviation analysis, I will also take the opportunity to use this data set to example, ex exemplify the possibility to filter data. <clears throat> so we are then going into the filter uh, filter tool, you can say, at the data management um, stage. And we will first of all define a filter for nickel. And we can say that anything above, anything <clears throat> uh, has to be at least 0 0.5 to be uh, recognized as a reliable measurement. In, in this situation, when you're creating filters, you have different modes. You can define a filter based on the at least setting, the range setting, the at most setting, or the equal setting. And we can see that 27 items were affected by this uh, filter. We can also exemplify this using, for instance, another variable and say that for this <clears throat> to be reliable, it has to be at least 0 0.25. And then we see that another 23 cases were affected by this filter. We will now clear these filters and move on to the data analysis stage. And we're going to exemplify now this deviation analysis using the tie scale. So we're dropping tie here, but before anything will happen, we'll have, we will have to supply the limits. <clears throat> we have an upper limit and we have a target. And when we enter these settings, you will see how this process deviation analysis implementation is working. You get the run chart for the parameter in question where the target and upper values in this case are given. And we also have a histogram where, sim where the similar specification are seen. And we can see that around in 20 cases or so, we are violating the upper setting. And we can also then see when this happened and what the, the reading of the quality index was at those occasions when we were violating the upper specification. And if we then want to drill down to other variables and see what sort of numerical values they had at these uh, crit uh, tricky time points, we can just click and drag these <coughs> additional parameters to this little list. Uh, apart from this, you can create a report in a, in a very similar fashion as we did with the first data set. So with the process deviation analysis, we can define limits and we can then also count the number of violations of these rules. The last use case that we're going to exemplify relates to the new things, the uh, Western Electric rules and the uh, process capability indices. <clears throat> and we will now open up another data set 
this is uh, initially going to be a small subset of the entire um, data set. This is a quality parameter that should balance around 50% coarse powder. And we are looking at the subset of around 200 time points just to illustrate the principle. So we have now loaded this. We move over to the data analysis stage. We're going to define limits and we are saying that anything below four, anything between 40 and 60 percent coarse powder is an okay <clears throat> interval or specification but ideally we should be close to the target of 50 percent coarse powder we can then create this capability analysis by dragging the variable in question onto this uh, drop square where we have the capability analysis and what then happens is that <clears throat> easy analytics will produce a histogram plot of this variable in question where it will display the lower target and upper settings and the black uh, line then also is another way to represent the distributional properties uh, what we will then have in the right hand part of the of the screen are the different uh, uh, CP and PP based measurements uh, and in this case we are seeing that we are looking at a very small sample size of 200 uh, samples. Uh, this can also be scripted uh, and we will uh, we will not be running a script here but we will open an existing investigation showing you the how the full analysis of this um, uh, core percent course uh, variable looks like so now we are comparing the most recent 50 values with a much larger background population of nearly 4700 measurements <clears throat> so the uh, black solid line that is the distribution of the let's say history that is the population of 4000 close to 4,700 time points at which the different measurements have been taken. And then we are referencing the most recent 50 samples, which is then represented by the dashed distribution curve. Uh, we can see that <clears throat> the standard deviation of the of the most recent 50 samples is smaller than the than the standard deviation of the of the population you can say and we can also see that the in as indicated by the CP value as compared with the PP value we are doing better and better towards the later part of this uh, sampling the, the 50 recent samples indicate that we are we are making a uh, we are having a more capable situation, although the, the mean value of the 50 last samples is slightly more off the target compared with the, with the populational values. We can also run the Western Electric rules for this uh, sample subset containing the 50 time points. And when we do that, we will obtain uh, first of all a run chart of these 50 samples <clears throat> and if there are uh, any rules western electric rules that are bro broken uh, the particular role rule that is broken at the particular time point is indicated using colors and we also have the different zones here in the top right hand corner uh, we can choose to see exactly what the rule descriptions are this is a toggle that can be turned on and off and we can also see how many of the different observations or time point triggered the different different rules. In the lower right hand part we have a, a, a more um, resolved uh, information, more detailed information indicating exactly which time point or which observation is breaking one or more of the different rules. Uh, apart from this um, uh, capability of the uh, capability in the analysis and the Western Electric rules, uh, the data insight and the reporting is ex extremely similar to what we have looked at in terms of the first example. So I'm not going to dwell more on that. You can, you can report and document uh, this uh, use case or this uh, type of application in the same way as we did for the uh, initial um, application. So with this in mind, uh, we will now go back to the PowerPoint. So after the demo, we are now back in the PowerPoint part and trying to sum up, sum up some of the things that we have that we have said and that we have demonstrated. So 
Easy analytics is aimed at or targeting non-experts in data analytics, the data consumers who routinely need to look at their data and understand issues and deviations. Easy analytics is a solution that provides a guided workflow, import intuitive visualizations and reporting of univariate data to detect quality issues. It's, it's like a one-click service from data import to easy sharing of the resulting report. Easy Analytics is intuitive, fast, and has an attractive design that also allow big data sets to, to be analyzed. And zooming in on this guided workflow, it has the main steps or main stages, data management, data analysis, and data insight. And the real hallmark here is that it opens up for standardized procedures, one-click analysis and scripting the procedures and also updates very, very quickly. But where do we go from here? Um, so now you've seen what Easy Analytics is today. And, and with the current release, we think we have a very interesting and, and promising backbone defined. So we would like to get the input from you on which challenges you and your colleagues are facing when it comes to data analysis. Which, part of, which parts of the process are time consuming and, and risky? And as you've seen here, Easy Analytics today is a univariate produ product, but that doesn't limit the future. As I mentioned earlier, we put the use case in focus when developing Easy Analytics, and we make sure we use the right tools and technologies to solve the use case. It's always solutions over technology. So please come forward and contact us if you have any interesting suggestions on the future development pathway for Easy Analytics. And in the last few slides, we're just going back again to the Umetrics suite, uh, pointing out where we are in this 11, st 11 series webinar um, or 11 stages webinar series, you may say, uh, to look into the data analytics capabilities. This is the third webinar and we're concentrating on ease analytics. And in the next webinar, webinar four and also five and six, we're going to familiarize ourselves with the Simca software, which is the flagship of the series, and also some of the data analytical workhorses uh, available through the Simca software. Uh, one of the goals of the Umetric suite is that it should be easy for the user to work both, uh, you can say, uh, reactively and proactively. And if we remove the, the names of the softwares, you can say that uh, with this toolset that is available inside the metric suite, we can address the, dis the dis descriptive question, um, trying to answer what has happened. We can work with the diagnostic scenario and trying to understand why things happened. But we can also go over to the more proactive stages of data analytics and try to find out what could happen uh, and also what should we do to make a certain thing happen? And perhaps even more importantly, how should, we, uh, how should we act or how should we plan things to avoid certain issues to happen in the future? And we are going to shed some light on all these questions throughout this series of 11 webinars. Summing up, you can say that uh, with the Umetric suite, Sartorius Stedem Data Analytics, wants to help our clients, users, and customers to capitalize on their data and also uh, understand how to plan informative data sets and measurement campaigns for the future. So what we want to help our users to accomplish is to discover the, the golden nuggets in their data, capitalize on those, and in short, understand how to change a little and thereby grow a lot. And having said that, I would like to thank you all for your time and attention. And I hope to see you on board next time uh, when we are going to go through webinar number four and starting to scratch on the surface of the data analytics capabilities of the Simca software for multivariate data analysis. Thank you very much and goodbye.